Sup everyone, Jordan here with GameSpot's first preview of Forspoken. Before we get started, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel, and be sure to leave us a like if you enjoy the video. Now, my first impression of Forspoken when I saw that first announcement trailer was genuine glee. Seeing a Japanese developed role playing game with a dark skinned person of color as the main protagonist is rare. Seeing such a game starring a black woman is exceptionally rare. Learning later that a vast majority of the principal cast are women is practically unheard of. So I went into this latest hands-off preview of Forspoken with hopeful expectations, and at first it seemed like developer Luminous Productions and publisher Square Enix knew their stuff. Going into this game, Forspoken creative producer Ryo Mitsuno wanted this to be an experience that primarily featured a female cast and start a protagonist that broke free of conventional fantasy hero tropes. Everything else about the game was built around that concept from the beginning of the project. In an interview, Mitsuno told GameSpot, quote, That was really one of the core concepts that we had from the very beginning of the game. We wanted to create a world with a bunch of strong female characters, and we wanted a world of magic, and we wanted to use those as our pillars when we started the project. We were impressed with the increasing number of female leads in the industry, but we wanted to really take it a step further and go with a female-centric world. We also wanted, with our main character Frey, to portray a character who is really down-to-earth and realistic portrayal of a modern-day young woman, who just so happens to then get thrown into this world with a bunch of powerful women, a sort of matriarchal society." End quote. In Forspoken, you play as Frey Holland, a young New Yorker who has hit rock bottom in her life and desperately yearns to get out of the city and find a place where she can belong. She sort of gets her wish when a strange portal suddenly transports her to the fantastical world of Athia, where she meets a sentient bracelet named Cuff. She eventually befriends the people of the last surviving human city on Athia, which is only spared by the growing miasma, called the Break, blanketing the land by existing on a mountaintop. Frey sets off in search of a way home, learning she's capable of extremely powerful magic along the way, which aids her in both traversal and combat. It's a setup that reminds me a lot of Isekai, a Japanese genre of light novels, manga, anime, and games where the protagonist is transported to and becomes trapped in another world. Less so modern day isekai, which are largely harem focused male power fantasies, and more so 90s and early 2000s isekai, where female protagonists and mixed gendered hero groups dominated the genre, and the stories focused on achieving personal power and agency by finding self confidence and overcoming doubts and insecurities. Those are vibes that I find intriguing, but I'm worried about how well the game can capture the experience of a black woman in that storyline. In terms of writing talent, the studio has that on lock. Both Rogue One co-writer Gary Witta and Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 head writer and creative director Amy Hennig created the bedrock for Forspoken Story, with Witta responsible for developing the concept of the world and Hennig focusing on the narrative and how it fit into the design of the game. From there, writing the final story and script was handed over to lead writers Todd Stashwick and Allison Reimer. The issue that gives me pause is that none of those people are black, so as good as the story may be, the preview left me with misgivings about the writing for its protagonist. In response, Luminous Productions' development team told GameSpot over email that writers and voice talent were both instrumental in the development of Frey's character, writing, quote, we worked closely with a number of consultants from BIPOC backgrounds to help portray Frey's character and tell the story from her perspective. End quote. All in all, it sounds like the team has done the homework, but I'm still a little concerned over the lack of color in Forspoken's writer's room. I will be thrilled if I see I'm worrying about nothing once Forspoken launches, but for now, I'm remaining cautious. For those curious as to whether Forspoken's gameplay is any fun, I'm not sure what to tell you. Previews only ever give us a small sample of what a game is, and it's even harder to make a judgment call when you're only watching a recording of someone else playing and can't even get a sense of how it all feels. Is zipping through the environment with a flurry of parkour moves as satisfying as it looks? Maybe? Are the variety of spell combinations you can pull off as rewarding to do as they appear? Gosh, I hope so. I can say that my first impression of the world of Athia is mixed. The act of exploring looks fun with how quickly and efficiently Frey flips and hops through the environment like a magical spider woman. Movement is stylish and fluid, with the world speeding past you at a seemingly gratifying pace. And Frey appears to possess abilities that will allow her to navigate Athia on both horizontal and vertical planes, which means there could be a nice verticality to combat as well. But the world itself seems empty of meaningful things to go find and do beyond fighting different enemies. In a statement, Luminous Productions wrote that, quote, there are still plenty of things for players to discover organically if they venture off the beaten path, end quote. But I saw no clear example of that during the presentation. 
If the preview is any indication, it sounds like the main crux of what players will experience when exploring the open world is near constant chatter between Frey and Cuff. Other open world games have used banter between their characters to fill the void and quiet space while exploring between story missions. Saints Row 4, Sunset Overdrive, Marvel Spider-Man, and Deathloop, just to name a few. But I'm still worried by just how empty Athia looks. Banter and enjoyable movement can only propel an open world so far. I think the idea of a single city being the last safe haven sounds cool on paper, but in practice it results in a world that looks devoid of life as soon as you leave the one hub area. Admittedly, this does create a narrative development that I am intrigued to see unfold in Forspoken Story. Athia is so devoid of life because the break transforms every living thing that comes in contact with it into a terrifying monster, regardless of what that creature was originally. So Frey's ability to safely move within the break puts her at odds with everyone else. They view her as a demon who's not to be trusted. Ironically, her ability to navigate the break means she's also the only person ideally suited to exploring it, finding its root cause, and stopping it. So alongside her quest to get home, Frey is also roped into aiding people who don't want anything to do with her. I didn't get a chance to see how that dynamic could play out, but it at least sounds intriguing as it sets up the world of Athia where Frey is outwardly attacked by monsters whenever she ventures outside the city, and mentally and emotionally attacked by societal stigma when within the city. Those are two totally different conflicts for the game to possibly explore, and if it does, I wonder which of the two will Frey handle better. All in all, Forspoken looks like a pretty game. It looks like an experience where navigation and combat mechanics flow together and you're able to pull off bombastic combos with seemingly hard-hitting attacks that explode with a display of colorful carnage. Forspoken looks like a game where you return to a hub city and regularly venture out into a world that appears to be shockingly devoid of anything meaningful to do but flip through the air and fight enemies. Problem is, I've seen all those things come together in a game before, and Bioware's Anthem didn't turn out so well. I'm hoping I'm wrong, and that phrase characterization propels Forspoken's campaign forward, but it's hard to tell how this game will play and whether it's good without actually getting hands on with it. We're still a ways from that too, as Forspoken is planned to launch for PS5 and PC on May 24th. But in the meantime, you can stay up to date on Forspoken and other upcoming RPGs by subscribing to GameSpot. And if you want to see more previews like this, be sure to like the video. Let us know in the comments if you're a fan of us including developer quotes in these types of video previews too, and whether we should be doing that more often.